Ladies and gentlemen, today I have arguably the biggest piece of news we've ever gotten in one installment in Zero, which is going to be arguably the biggest data mine that we've ever had. Now, this data mine is special because normally when data mines came out, come out for Zero, they come out at the end of a month. So, like, we would have expected this at the end of April. And normally when they come out, it's not just text, so like names of cards and effects, but also the pictures of the cards. And this data mine is special because it did come from the same data as usual. It's the same data miner as usual. I helped to actually translate some of this data. But the thing is, is that there's no pictures for the cards. So the card art has not been included in the data yet, which might happen at the end of this month in the update. But we do have the effects of so many cards. So many cards. So let's go now. To desktop to the good old oh, let me full screen this go to our good friend vg0 meta and take a look at all these cards because there's so much to take a look at so i'm going to leave timestamps in the description for a lot of these that you can scroll through but some of these first few will be very fast so for royals there's literally only one card i think that's new which is let's get down to it oh it might not even be in here okay this one okay so for royals it hasn't been added yet which was um, a potential break ride, but it was it didn't have a name yet, so I guess that's why it hasn't been added. But there's a nameless break ride, which says limit break four when you ride on top of this unit. The unit that is ridden gets plus 10k in a crit. So sounds like Ashley, but we're not expecting that to come out for some time. Then I don't think we have new Bermuda support yet. We do have dark regulars though, quite a lot. So first things first, greedy hand, the new starter is here. So four runner, count plus one and put him into your soul to put a great two or less card from your deck into your soul. So that's really nice. Uh, we'll, I'll show you which cards you can actually uh, tutor with that. Then we have Yellow Bolts, which will be a common, I mean a rare, sorry, which is Vanguard and Rearguard Circle, rest this unit to Soul Charge 1. This saw a lot of use in Worlds. Courting Succubus. Um, I'm gonna not go through everything, but just the important cards, because you can go through all these things in the website, um, because otherwise it would take a bit too long. So Courting Succubus is a, when the attack she boosted hits, Soul Charge 1. Demon Bike, I'm going to go through the Witching Hour cards. So Demon Bike says, when placed, add a Demon Bike of the Witching Hour to your deck. So you basically create extra copies into your deck. So if you're already running 4, you make a 5th copy. And then during your turn, this unit gets power 2k for each Demon Bike in your soul. And if you have 3 or more, then this unit gets a crit plus 1. Insane. There's more of these. Uh, then, let's see... Dimension Creeper is a triple rare, it seems, but keep in mind that when the cards actually come out in game, very often we see that the rarity gets changed. So a lot of the rarities uh, do get shifted around. So don't trust the rarities yet, but you can trust the powers as well as... Actually, even the powers, not always. You can trust the skills usually. So at least you know which cards are coming in, and the names, of course. So Dimension Creeper is when he's in the soul, you put him into your drop zone to soul charge 2. This is really good, of course. Um, then other good cards here we have... Hades Carriage of the Wishing Hour, same effect, when placed, you add a Hades Carriage to your deck, and then he gets plus 2k for each, each Hades Carriage in your soul, and if you have 3 or more, he gets a crit, as a grade 2, that's really good, um, so that's really huge. Free Traveler got a buff, only costs Kalmas 1 to search your deck for any grade 2 or less and add it to your soul, this is insanely good. Emblem Master is only a rare, when his attack hits a Vanguard, Kalmas 1 to Soul Charge 3, it's going to be used a lot, for sure. Storyteller is your Kalmas 2 on hit draw card, then... Red Magma, like cards like this, I think will definitely be, both Red Magma and Indifferent Succubus will definitely become um, not triple rares. I don't think they will be triples because this says when his attack hit, when he attacks, if you have six or more soul, draw a card and put a card from hand to the bottom of your deck. So it does the same thing as the OTT common. So I don't think it's going to be triple rare, although it is a great two with 11k power, but still. Indifferent Succubus, if you have 10 or more soul, gets plus 4k. Definitely not going to be. I mean, it's a 15k great too but i don't think it's gonna be a triple rare at all dark lord of abyss had a pretty big change so he's still 11k is a double rare limit break four count blast two and persona blast there was never a persona blast um to soul charge two and get plus 1k for each card in your soul until end of turn if you have six or more soul get an extra crit i think it's quite bad if they keep that persona blast it's quite bad then demon chariot of the wishing hour insane effect when placed you can add a chariot a carriage and a bike to your deck so one of each and then he gets plus 2k for each demon chariot in your soul, if 3 or more extra crit. So I think that the Witching Hour engine will definitely be run in Dark Regulars going forward. This is actually really, really huge. 
And then Bladewing Ragey got some nice skills too, so he's now 11k base, which is really huge. And during your turn, if your soul has 15 or more cards, he gets plus 15k power and an extra 2 crits. So basically threatening PGs from when your opponent is at 2 damage. And then when placed on Vanguard Circle, you can put 3 cards with the same name as one of your rearguards from your deck into your soul. So for example, if you have a, I don't know, a Demon Chariot or Demon Bike on your rearguard circle, you can put 3 of them from your deck into your soul. So that works like that. You can also choose to play less of the Witching Hour engine because they make themselves into your deck. Of course, it takes away from the deck thinning, but still very cool. Moving on to Dimension Police, my number one favorite clan. We have Goyusha, got a huge buff actually. If your Vanguard is grade 2 or greater, put 3 of your Dimensional Robo Rearguards into your soul to write a grade 3 Dimensional Robo from your deck. So now it's only 3 instead of 4, that's a huge buff, because trust me, it really there are many times where you'll have 3 but not 4. Trust me, from years of playing Dimension Police, I can really vouch for this. So Goyusha is in, Zeal is in, so the entire Zeal chain is in. Dylander is in, when placed on Rear Guard Circle, comments 1 to give you a Dimensional Robo unit plus 4k. The Zeal Grade 1 is in, uh, it does, <clears throat> basically, when you ride the Grade 2 on top of it, you do minus 3k to your opponent's Vanguard. Dimariner is in, from Soul you can put into the drop zone to give Vanguard plus 3k. Um, let's see what else is good. Self Damagers. Die Brave is a triple rare, perhaps? I think it will get demoted to a double, personally. Um, so I think it's going to become a double rare. In Soul, put him into your drop zone to have your Vanguard get the following ability until end of turn. Vanguard Circle, when this unit's attack hits, Kalmas wants to draw a card. So it's the exact same as the old one, but now it's much easier to actually pull it off because, I mean, your opponent would have to PG this for it to not hit. So you can basically use it in the early turns when you know you're hitting um, to get yourself an extra draw here and there. So it's quite good. So that's the great twos. Oh no, we still have Operator Girl Mika, so on hit, Kalmas wants to draw a card. And then Die Dragon. Uh, if he's a 12k attacker, if you have a D Robo Vanguard, so that's really, really good. So it keeps the same effect. Grade 2 Zeal, uh, minus 3 to your opponent's Vanguard when you ride the Grade 3. And then we have, let's see, these were already out. Great Dayusha, definitely something to be excited about. Limbreak 4, when he attacks, if you have 3 or more D Robos in your soul, he gets power plus 2k and extra crit, and then cross ride. So keeps basically the exact same effects as he had originally. Maybe this will get buffed, maybe not. I think I'll probably keep it as it is. But this is already nice, I mean, it's like a 15k with a crit on its own, and then, I mean, you buff, you, you can give him more power when you need to get over your opponent's defensives, but otherwise, you're fine. You can just swing with this, unboosted, and then restand with Laurel, so definitely very good. Sadly, no image, but man, really hyped for this. And then Galactic Beast Zeal, of course. Uh, Lemon Break 4, count last 2, to have your opponent's Vanguard get power minus 1 for each of your rearguards in the end of turn, so basically minus 5k power. So your opponent, if they're 10k, they become 5, if they're 11, they become 6, and then of course if you ride over the grade 2 with this, then, where's the grade 2? Here it is. Then it's another minus 3, so minus 8 power. And so that's really, really good. Enigmin Cyclone, when it attacks, if its power is 14k or higher, then you can return retire one of your opponent's rearguards, which is pretty good. And nothing else really worthy of note in Dimension Police, but Great Daisha coming out is great, uh, no pun intended. Uh, Dai Dragon being out is great. Of course, we expected all of these. Zeal being out is pretty good too. I'm assuming that these will be part of the next update. I think that Dark Regulars and DP will definitely be in the May update. Um, so we'll, I'll still keep saying what else I think is in the May update. But yeah, so really good stuff here. Now let's move on to Mega Colony. Got some new stuff. So, Mega Colony has Mega Colony Battler C. When the attack this unit boosts his Vanguard, you can put him into your soul to paralyze one of your opponent's rearguards. Pretty good. Uh, let's see. Toxic Soldier, when he attacks, he ignores Intercept. It's pretty good. Mosquito will be your soul charger. Kept the same effect. Uh, let's see what else is there. Keep in mind, there hasn't been a single Mega Colony card to come out in Zero yet, so these are all supposed to be new. Toxic Trooper also ignores Intercept. Very good. Machining Armor Beetle. Uh, when placed, put one of your other rearguards into your soul to paralyze one of your opponent's rearguards. It's quite good. Uh, synergize as well with Stag Beetle, so that's definitely good. Then we have Master Beetle. Only has one skill, Limit Break 4, when he attacks a Vanguard, paralyze two of your opponent's rearguards for free. So doesn't cost any Count Blast, that's really, really good. We'll see when this releases. I feel like they might drop this in an event soon, hopefully. But yeah, pretty good, pretty good stuff. Neo Nectar, got some big stuff. Arbor's Dragon is out, and Musketeers are out. So, we don't know when these will come out. I think Mega Colony should be in an event, and I think hopefully Neo Nectar also stays in an event, but might be part of a pack. But I don't think it's either going to be next month or I have no idea when. So, Musketeer Ruth, 
10k attacker. Rebecca is your uh, on place combat one, sack one to look at top four to call one. Uh, Arbor's Dragon lets you copy uh, something that is the same name as your rear guard. Then, uh, let's see what else we have here. Augusto is your 12k attacker. Kaivant is the same uh, on place combat one, sack one, look at top four to call one. Timber does more copying. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Sephiroth, of course, Lunar Rig 4, all units get the ability. During your turn, if you have another unit with the same name as this unit, this unit gets power plus 3k power. So it's really good. Um, good for getting over defensives, but doesn't really do anything else. So I think that's the only sad part. Whereas Cecilia, ooh, she does a lot. So Cecilia is Lunar Rig 4. Calamus 1 and return 5 Musketeer cards from your drops onto your deck to call 2 White Lily Musketeer Cecilia from your deck. So with this, you can return Cecilia as well. So if you have 3 Cecilias in the... Uh, in the drop, then you can basically put them back, and that's basically like recycling triggers. And keep in mind, when you check grade threes, they go to your drop zone, so you can recycle her like that, and then you just recycle whatever, whatever other um, musketeers you need to. So it's really, really good. Recycling, you won't deck out. It's only count plus one, and you get to basically plus two from this effect, uh, two grade threes, so it's pretty good. Sadly, it's not up two. You have to call two. Also, I accidentally clicked that. Let's go back to Neo Nectar here. But... Yeah, so Cecilia is really good, and her second skill is Fanger Circle once per turn, retire one of your Musketeer Rearguards to look at top 5 and call one. So you basically get to just fill, like, retire stuff to get this skill off. So it's really, really good for that. So that's that. Pale Moon got some hot stuff. I should probably zoom in on the website maybe a little bit more so you guys can see more cards um, zoomed in. This might be better. So now for Pale Moon, Girl Who Crossed the Gap is coming. This card makes a lot of good combos. Count us one and put her into your soul and call a card that is not. Girl Who Crossed the Gap, so you can call Purple Trapezist to do some combos. Smiling Presenter, count us one, put him into your soul. Look at top 10 cards and you may put one into your soul. Not that good. This didn't see much use. Then Magician of Quantum Mechanics, also a great card. Count us one, put him into your soul and then basically call something that isn't Magician of Quantum Mechanics from your soul. And then at the end of the turn, put that unit back into your soul and call back the Magician of Quantum Mechanics from your soul. So it's also really, really good. This card saw some use in look here as well. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Fire Juggler saw some use at the end of the battle that this unit boosted a Vanguard and that unit's drive check revealed a grade 3. Put this unit to your soul and call a card other than Fire Juggler from your soul. This saw some use in one of the Pale Moon decks back in the day. So that's quite good. Then moving on. Carry is the on-hit Kalmas 2 to draw. Peekaboo's pretty good. Start of your main phase, soul boss 1 to call him. At the end of your turn, put this unit to your soul. So it's pretty nice. Dancing Princess, ooh, got a big buff. Uh, she's still 8k power, but when placed, count us 1 instead of 2 to put a grade 2 or lower card from your deck into your soul. This card saw a lot of use in Pale Moon. This is a staple in Pale Moon for years to come, and the fact that they buffed it from count us 2 to count us 1 is insane. It's insane, I tell you. Dreamy Fortress, um, I don't think this will stay a triple rare, but anyway. When this unit is retired during your opponent's turn, so basically when they... Oh, there's a typo here. Um, basically, when they would attack it, you can call another Dreamy Fortress from your soul to the same rearguard circle. So basically, like, you get an additional intercept, which is good in zero, but I don't think it's worthy of a triple rare. Maybe a double, but that's about the most I would give for it. Then, Silverthorn Dragon Tamer Lukier. So, first things first, any good Pale Moon player from back in the day will know that this skill is more important. When your rearguard is placed from soul, this unit gets power plus three gains on a turn. Every single time. So, uh, Girl Who Crossed the Gap, count one into soul. Call out uh, Purple Trapezist. Purple Trapezist skill, put something into soul. Call out Girl Who Crossed the Gap. Uh, Girl Who Crossed the Gap skill, count us one, put him into soul. Uh, call out Purple Trapezist. Purple Trapezist puts the other Purple Trapezist back into soul. Call out Girl Who Crossed the Gap. So, as much count as you have, you do basically like an infinite combo that lasts as long as your count boss lasts. And then you can pump up Lukier's power like crazy. And also swing for good numbers with your rear guards too, because you have uh, Crimson Beast Tamer, uh, Turquoise Beast Tamer, and things like that. So, this skill, nuts. And then when your opponent nukes your board, you have Lumen Rig 4, Calamus 3, to call up to 1 grade 1, 1 grade 0, 1 grade 2, and 1 grade 3 from your soul. You do not have to call a card of every grade, but you can call one of each. So, good to full field, basically. You call out your starter, a grade 1, a grade 2, and a grade 3, so it's pretty good. But of course, this skill is the main focus of Luke here. That's what made it really, really good. It's going to be a lot of fun combos to do as well. Sword Magician Sarah is a lot of people's favorite. When your drive check reveals a grade 3, you can put a grade 3 rid of rearguard into your soul to call a card from your soul. So basically, you can take out a grade 3 to call out an intercept, for example. Even if you're not going to attack with it, it's an intercept. So that's pretty good. And when she's boosted, she gets power plus 3k. So this will be a really good budget build for Pale Moon, I think. But I'm not sure how budget Pale Moon can get because Purple Trapezes is kind of a staple. So yeah. 
Midnight Invader is a 12 attacker. Uh, Nightmare Doll Amy is the um, Mega Blast. Starlight Melody Tamer Farah is also very popular. Um, Limit Break 4, Cattle Blast 1, and Persona Blast. Oh, there's a typo here as well. And then you Soul Charge 2 and Call a Card from your Soul, and that unit gets power plus 3k. This was also quite popular. Um, you basically get to Cattle Blast 1 tutor something for, and you get Soul Charge 2. I personally never thought this card was that good, but I mean, some people really liked it. And then here's your like generic Limit Break plus 5k, as well as when placed on Vanguard Circle, Combo 2 to call a card from your soul, which is pretty good. So yeah, that's Pale Moon. Good stuff. We have one Shadow Paladin card that we'll quickly take a look at. It's quite impactful. Oh okay, yeah, no, actually I have a couple. No, we have quite a few. Sorry, we have quite a few. Blaster Dark Spirit. When placed from deck, count plus 1 to retire one of your opponents where you two or less front or rear guards. So this is like the exact same effect. At the end of the battle, this unit was attacked by your opponent, retire this unit. So it still works as an intercept, but then after the intercept, even if the attack didn't hit, like if they attack with like a 5k or a 6k and it doesn't hit, he'll still retire. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And this card can be included in a gold paladin deck. So it's both gold and a uh, shadow. So also Blaster Blade Spirit has the same treatment. We can quickly take a look at it. I think I forgot it or scrolled past it or it's on the gold paladin page. Okay, I think it's on the Gold Paladin page. Never mind. Okay, we'll get back to that. So, let's go back to Shadow Paladin, because <clears throat> we have some more cards. We have some more cards. We're not done yet. Uh, there we go. Origin Mage Ildana. So, this was the Limit Break for Shadows, but this has a fat buff. It completely changed. Vanguard Circle, Limit Break 4. When rode upon Break Ride, Counter Blast 1, to have your Vanguard get plus 10k until end of turn. Break ride. Call a grade 2 or less card from your deck, and that unit gets power plus 5k until end of turn. Excuse me, Mordred? Mordred with 10k base power? This is literally Mordred Phantom Skill. I don't understand why they gave Mordred Phantom Skill out to Ildana, but it's pretty interesting. Okay. And then his other skill is the regular Break Ride skill, which is when it unit attacks a Vanguard, it gets power plus 2k until end of that battle. But, like, Ildana? Not. Um, Mordred? <laughs> I am confused. Regardless, very cool. Moving on, we have Touch Guys. They got a lot of stuff in this. The Raptor Soldier line is here. Baby Ptero is here. Uh, we're gonna scroll through these a bit quicker. Beam Ptero, if he's if a unit, if he's retired during your battle phase, you give one of your units plus 3k, so it helps you build power. Raptor Surge Sergeant is a uh, grade 1 double rare. So he's part of the right chain. When the grade 2 rides him, you can call the grade 1 from your deck. So it's a free plus 1. That's actually really good. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Brachio Porter is pretty good. When he's retired during your turn, you can count on us 1 to call another Brachio Carrier from your deck. And Brachio Carrier, I believe, is the grade 2, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll get to that later. But that's really good. Like, sacking grade 1 to call the grade 2 is nice. It's really nice. Uh, Raptor Captain, the grade 2. Uh, when the grade 3 rides on top of him, you can call another grade 2 from your deck, so you get a free intercept, which is really good, again. Um, Slash Tarot, when this unit is retired during your battle phase, so you can give a unit plus 3k, so that's also pretty good. During your turn, if your regard was retired this turn, he gets plus 3k only once. Oh no, actually, this I think this does... Is this continuous, or is it auto? I'm not sure. Because if it's auto, this will stack. If it's continuous, it's only once. So it's an 11k attacker, that's okay. There's Brachio Carrier, the grade 2 that you call, only 7k power, but when this unit is retired during your turn, count on 1 to call a Citadel Dragon Brachio Castle from your deck, so we're going to get to that later, that's a grade 3. Then, uh, Circular Spino, when this unit attacks, retire another one of your rear guards to get plus 4k into end of battle. Pretty good 12k attacker. Then, Raptor Colonel. Limit Break 4, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, you may count on 1 to retire 2 of your rear guards to increase this unit's power until the end of that battle. The increase is the sum of the original power of the units retired as the cost, so... This can really get big power, um, get over defensives, and just hit for good numbers. Overall, really good, good skill, uh, doesn't cost much, you can just re retire your grade ones you've boosted with, or any of the other cards that like trigger off of being retired. Um, and then the second skill is, of course, plus 1k if you have the grade 2 in your soul. And then Dark Rex is in this too, so Dark Rex has a hand skill, you bind this card to have one of your units get plus 3k power until the end of turn. Might not seem like much, but then you look at this. Bind zone, limit break 4. At the end of the battle, your grade 3 or greater vanguard attacked. If the attack did not hit during that battle, retire 3 of your rearguards to ride this card as stand and draw 2 cards. So, that's pretty good. 
If you have full field, you can do Retire 2 with Raptor Colonel, and then do Retire 3 with Dark Rex after that to get another Vanguard attack out. Um, but of course, you can also combo this twice. So basically attack, doesn't hit, Retire 3, and then one of them needs to be something like um, the Brachial Carrier, for example, that'll call out another thing. And then you have three Rearguards again, and then you're going to attack with Dark Rex once again if you bound two of them from your hand. So really, really good. So there is Brachial Castle. When this unit is retired during your turn, can almost want to call the Grade 1, basically, from deck. So... Yeah, really good stuff for Tachis. Um, we haven't had Tachis released in Japanese yet, but when they do, they're going to be pretty damn good. All right, so moving on to Gold Paladin, there's a lot of good stuff. Sadly, no Angels. What we have left so far is Golds, Narukami, Great Nature, and Aqua Force. Like I said, there's so much to look at. But this is by far the most surprising part to me, which is the Gold part. So Koron is a new starter. And then Stronghold of the Black Chain's Hole. So the Spectral Duke Chain is here. Forerunner. Put this unit into your soul to have one of your units get power plus regains on of turn. This card can be included in a Shadow Paladin deck! Huh? <laughs> so this is the not the starter for Spectral Duke, but it's part of the Black Chains, but it can be used in Shadows. And that's not all. Black Dragon Whelp Vortimer, the grade 0 of the Spectral Duke chain, can also be used in Shadows. <laughs> His skill is when the Vortimer, grade 1 Vortimer rides, you can look at top 7 for a Spectral Duke or a grade 2 Vortimer to your hand. And if a card that's not the grade 1 Vortimer rides, you can call him to a real circle, but it can be used in shadows. That's insane. That's actually insane. Kahedan, look at this. Grade one can be used in shadows. <laughs> when the attack this unit boosted hits a vanguard, can almost one retire one of your other rear guards. Call the top card of your deck to an open rear guard circle. This can be used in shadows. That's insane for shadows, honestly. It's nuts. Cause like, you can activate Nemain off of this. You can activate Maka off of this to get a fresh attack out if you have the counter blast for it. It's nuts. It's nuts. Crazy. Grade 1 Vortimer, when the Grade 2 rides, retire one of your rearguards, and then if you retired, call two cards on top of your deck, two separate open rearguard circles. This card can be included in the Shadow Paladin deck. <sighs> Insane! Insane! The whole Spectral Duke chain is in here. Warhorse Raging Storm is not Shadow Paladin playable though, interestingly. Black Mane Witch can be used in Shadows, to me this is crazy. When placed, retire one of your other rearguards to call the top card of your decks and open rearguard circle. Black Mane Witch was pretty useful back in the day, so the fact that this is now used in both Shadows and Golds is insane. I don't, like, I, I wonder what this means for the game, are they gonna do more of these dual clan cards? Like, it's nuts! Gigantic Commander can be used in Shadows. During your turn, if you have more rearguards than your opponent, 13k attacker. I mean, no, 11k attacker, sorry. Bagnamagus is a 12k attacker with Azel. Grade 2 Vortmer. so if the Grade 1 Vortmer is in Soul, plus 1k. When Spectral Duke Dragon rides this unit, retire one of your rearguards. If you're retired, call two cards on top of your deck to separate open rearguard circles. So once again, free plus 1. It's insanely good. Insanely good. Also can be used in Shadows, of course. Let's keep that in mind. Oh my god. Alright, and here we go. A good 7 other Grade 3s. Blazing Lion Platina Azel. So they buffed Ultimate Break. Let me show you how. Uh, so... Limit Break 5, aka Ultimate Break, Count Blast 3 to have 5 of your rear guards get power plus 5k until end of turn. If you have 5 rear guards, then this unit gets crit plus 1 until end of turn as well. Pretty good. I mean, Count Blast 3 is pretty expensive, but you have Tron to counter charge, so it's kind of okay. Um, but it makes, makes it so that your board can actually hit for uh, magic numbers over defensives really easily. And then Cross Ride, if you have Blonde Azel in the soul, then he gets permanent plus 2k, so permanent 13k. And then this, if this unit is in Cross Ride, it's Limit Break 5 becomes Limit Break 4. Hello? And all of the Ultimate Breaks that are out here so far have this text. They actually buffed Ultimate Break because they knew that it was bad. I love Game Studio. They know what they're doing. Chrome Jailer Dragon can be included in a Shadow Paladin deck. Limit Break 4, Kalmas 2, retire 2 of your rearguards to get power plus 10k and crit plus 1. So basically, a little bit more expensive... Um, well, actually no, it's a less expensive... Phantom Blaster Dragon. Pretty cool. Canoblast 1 and Persona Blast. Look at the top 4 cards of your deck, call 2 cards from among them to open rearguard circles, and put the rest on the bottom of your deck. Wow. It's really good. Canoblast 1 Persona to plus 2. I mean, to plus 1, basically, actually. Really, really good. Really good. And then this. And can be used in Shadows. So, now it's not just... Like, now literally every grade 3 in Shadows can threaten crit. Insane. Insane. I tell you, insane. Spectral Duke Dragon has the exact same, actually no, slightly different. 
Number week four, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked the Vanguard, combos two and retire three of your rear guards. Stun this unit and draw a card. This unit loses twin drive. So he gets plus one K if you have Vortimer and Soul, of course, but power wise, you're gonna need like a Tron or something boosting him to hit on that second attack, and even then it's pretty tricky because you have to retire three, so you need to like retire like front, back, back to not retire one of your other interceptors. So yeah, interesting. We'll see how this is, but of course, this card can be included in the Shadow Paladin deck. Of course. And then, yeah, everything else is not that special, but... Golds, they threw me for a woozy. This is crazy. It's crazy, I tell you. Then, Soko um, is a 6k, grade 0, forerunner, restraint, so he cannot attack, but he also cannot boost, but you can use cards like Dandan, oh no, not Dandan, Coco, uh, to remove the ability with the seal effect. Exorcist, Mage, Dandan. All your Dungaree get the following ability. When placed, buying a card from the top of your deck. So, Dungaree's uh, Crossride is in here, and that makes him quite good too. So, I think the Dungaree Crossride came out much later, didn't it? Initially. Um, during your opponent's turn, this unit gets... He's a, a grade 1 10k. During your opponent's turn, gets minus 2k. During both players' turn, this unit gets minus 4k. So, you use the that one starter to remove this guy's ability, so he's uh, 10k on your turn and 8k on your opponent's turn. So... Pretty good for a booster. Exorcist Mace Rojo. Uh, seal the abilities of one of your other rearguards. Effects gained will not disappear. So basically you seal this ability and it doesn't have it anymore. So that's really cool. Dungary 10k booster. Uh, let's look some more. Dusty Plasma Dragon. I've been waiting for this. 12k attacker for Vermillion. Then uh, Exorcist Knight. Restraint. Combos 1 to lose Restraint. And during your opponent's turn this unit gets minus 2k power. So it's 12k. You can actually remove this ability. So it's 12k in your opponent's turn. Stormbring Dragon. Uh, when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, count plus one to like the top five cards of your deck and add a grade three or greater card to your hand. I didn't see this initially. I don't think it's going to stay a triple rare, maybe a double rare, but yeah. Whirlwind Axe wielding Exorcist Knight, 12k attacker for Dungaree. Pretty good. What else do we have here? When your grade three Vanguard is placed, gets plus 10k. That's pretty good. Wyvern Knight, soul plus one to have this unit's name become the same name as your Vanguard until end of turn. So then basically, uh, this is used in Vajra and stuff like that. We'll get to that pretty soon. Uh, here we have Vajra Emperor Indra. When this unit attacks, count plus one to get critical plus one for each of your other Vajra Emperor Indra until end of battle. So basically, you use this guy's effect to copy the name of your Vanguard, and then you get another extra crit on Indra, so that's pretty good. Dragonic has Vermillion the Blood. So once again, if this unit is in Crossride, his Limit Break 5 becomes Limit Break 4, Crossride is Vermillion, and then Limit Break 5, count plus three to get power plus 5k, crit plus one, and the following ability, this unit battles every unit in your opponent's front row in one attack. So, exact same ability, except now you can use that on Limit Break 4, which is pretty good so definitely like that a lot uh let's see vayu gets plus 10k for each of your values on board dungaree unlimited is a cross ride with the regular dungaree limb break four count plus two and bind a card face up from the top of your deck to retire one of your opponent's front row rear guards and this unit gets power plus 2k for each card in your bind zone until end of turn if you have six or more cards in your bind zone then it gets critical plus one so keep in mind that regular dungaree binds two when you ride it and then the starter says you bind one more every time you place a dungaree, so bind three on right of the first one, bind another one when you ride this guy, and then just call two more dungarees and you get another one. Uh, but you also bind a card uh, from his effect, so you only need one more actually called. So very good actually. Pretty nice because you get to pop your opponent's rear guard, and you also get a crit and power in that scale, so it's actually very good. I think dungaree and limited will see quite a bit of use in ranked. And yeah, and then here's another limit break card. Limit Break 4, when the team attacks the Vanguard, count plus 1 to retire all your opponent's grade 3 rear guards. Won't see too much use, sadly, but yeah. Narukami got some great stuff. This video is long, man, but there's so much to cover. Alright, we got a new Forerunner for Great Nature, Gardening Mole. When your other rear guard is retired during your end phase, count plus 1 to put, put this into your soul to return the card to your hand. Not that good. Not that good. Recorder Dog, when he's retired during your end phase, count plus 1 to call a Vocal Chicken. We'll see that soon. Um... Soft Tank Sloth, when this unit is retired in your end phase, Soul Blast 1 to counter charge 2. That is a good effect. Uh, not much space for it though, but still very good. And then Melodica Cat, when this unit is retired in your end phase, for Count Blast 1 to call Recorder Dog, so that's the one we just saw, the grade 1. So when he's retired, the grade 2 is retired, you call the grade uh, 1. And when the grade 1 is retired, you call the grade 3. And so the grade 3 is Vocal Chicken. When this unit is retired during your end phase, Count Blast 1 to call the grade 2. And then. Battler of the Twin Brush, Polaris. 10k, triple rare. Limerick 4, when this unit attacks, the Vanguard Kalmas 2 to stand one of your rearguards, and that unit gets power plus 4k until end of turn. At the end of that turn, retire that unit. 
this is a good ability because you can trigger your on retire effects um like duck bill and things like that and also just put a lot of power from things like leopold and other things on it and also gives you a restand which means it's not an on hit because this thing needs to hit non-bill kangaroo but polaris just needs to attack while on vanguard circles that's really good and then when he attacks the vanguard he gets power plus three cancel end of battle so pretty good green nature got a few things but um overall just nice little pieces to help the deck get a bit better but not necessarily game breaking or anything like that so finally aqua force aqua force has so much stuff going for it so eric is your great researcher aqua breath draco kid this is a really really nice skill that will see more use when we get title assault uh forerunner and then rear circle put this unit to your soul to have one of your units get power plus one and the following ability until end of turn when this unit's attack hits a vanguard and if it's the fourth battle of that turn or more, draw a card. Really good. Like I said, with cards like Tidal Assault that restand, um, you'll be able to draw like two cards at a time with him, so it's really, really good. Uh, Rearguard Circle, Try Hold, Draco Kid, also Forerunner. When he attacks, if it's the third battle of that turn or more, he's an 8k attacker. This saw some use back when Aqua Force first came out. Astrea is when it's when the attack of this unit boosted hits a Vanguard, Combus 1 and put this in your soul to stand one of your rear guards. So that's pretty good. You can't run both. Um, Aqua Breath and Astrea in the same deck, but still pretty good. Camus 1 to get 1k, not doesn't matter. Splash Assault, does, uh, it's a 9k attacker, it's not bad on third battle or more. Um, Cynthia is a ditch to draw. Dorothea is a 10k booster. Pascal is your perfect guard. Storm Rider Eugen, this is where Aqua Force gets different. So, for those of you that have been asking for months now, how are they going to do Aqua Force in zero? Like, it needs to attack Vanguard. Like, you need to get over the intercepts. Like, what do you even do? This is your answer. Rear Guard Circle, Candle Bus 2, to have this unit attack, ignoring intercept until end of turn. This is hot. This is hot. So, then his other effect, of course. When he attacks a Vanguard, if it's the first battle of that turn, it gets power plus 2k until end of battle. At the end of that battle, this unit exchanges positions with your Rear Guard in the same column. So, that's the exact same effect, but... This Cannon Blast 2 to ignore Intercept is really good because Aqua Force doesn't really Cannon Blast much. It really doesn't Cannon Blast much in the early uh, release, and so that's pretty good. Then, uh, let's see. Storm Rider Nicholas, at the end of the battle of this unit, attack the Vanguard. Cannon Blast 1 to exchange the positions of this unit and your rearguard in the same column. <clears throat> this was one of the BTO9 Aqua Force cards that came out, so it was okay. Light Signals Penguin Soldier is um, a double rare, Soul Blast 2 to draw a card. A lot of these cards are usually rare, so I think this will get demoted to a rare. Uh, let's see. Algos, grade 2, is a double rare. This I can imagine. Vanguard Circle, Rear Circle, when the unit's attack hits a Vanguard, if it's a third battle of that turn or more, draw a card. So extra card draw, always appreciated. Coral Assault is a third battle or more, 11k attacker. Storm Rider Basil is an 8k, but I feel like they might buff this to a 9. So... Uh, of course he has a skill, Cannon Blast 2, to ignore Intercept. And when this unit attacks, if it's the first battle of that turn, then he gets plus 2k power, so he's a 10k. At the end of the battle, uh, you can exchange positions with your rearguard in the same column, so gets an extra attack out. Tier Knight Valeria, uh, 9k grade 2. When this unit's attack hits a Vanguard, if it's the four battle, fourth battle of that turn or more, retire one of your opponent's rearguards, so it's the opposite of Algos. Algos will draw you an extra card in the third battle. Valeria will retire one of your opponent's rearguards on the fourth battle, but keep in mind that you'll have already cleared their intercepts, so you'll be retiring back row usually. Then, Stormrider Daemon, same thing. End of battle, the attack the Vanguard combos one to exchange positions. This is nice because it's not restricted to the first battle of that turn at least, so that's pretty good. Um, then, Naval Gazer Dragon, the triple rare one, uh, the, the trial deck, grade 3 is here. So, let me break 4. When he attacks the Vanguard, he gets plus 3k and the following ability until end of that battle. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So, when this unit's attack hits uh, anything, if it is the third battle of that turn or more, Cannon Blast 2 and stand 2 of your rear guards. So, this is pretty hot because it can hit anything. So, you can actually attack uh, with this third battle into a rear guard. So, for example, you do Cannon Blast 2 to ignore intercept. So, you attack Vanguard first. Or, like, let's say you attack rear guard with your one rear, and then you attack Vanguard with your, like, Basil or something. Then Basil swaps. And then Naval Gazer attacks third time to the other rear guard and activates his ability on hit to Cannon Blast 2 and stand to others. Of course, this is very Cannon Blast heavy, though, so keep that in mind. Um, and then his other skill is when he attacks, if it's a third battle of that turn or more, he gets plus 3k because he's only 10k. So 13k attacker, 16 with this skill. But this skill, I mean, it kind of was there at the start of Limit Break era, but then it 
phased out because it kind of clashes with how Maelstrom plays a little bit. Not really, actually. Um, and then, of course, speak of the devil, blue storm dragon Maelstrom. Vanguard Circle, Limit Break 4. When he attacks a Vanguard, if it's the fourth battle of that turn or more, he gets power plus 5k and the following ability. When this unit's attack hits, Count must want to draw a card and retire one of your opponent's rear guards. So, has to hit, but of course, in zero, it's much easier to hit um, as long as you don't get a crit. So, I think. I'm not sure if Aqua Force will use crits, actually. I don't think so. I think it'll be very draw heavy. Nine draws, four heals, I'm thinking. Um, maybe stands, but I don't think so. I think it's gonna be very draw heavy. But keeps the exact same skill from its original rendition. I like it a lot. I think it's going to be quite um, dominant. It might not seem like it, but I think it will be. And so, Maelstrom, looking good. Storm Rider Diamantes, uh, once again, count us 2 to ignore Intercept. When he attacks Vanguard, if it's the first battle of that turn, gets plus 2 cancel on the battle, so 11k attacker, very important. At the end of the battle, uh, he can exchange positions with your rearguard in the same column, so pretty good. I wonder if they'll buff the power to make it like 11k and then it can hit cross rights. That'd be pretty good, especially in this meta. Uh, and then Hydro Hurricane Dragon. Limbrick 4, when he attacks a Vanguard, gets plus 3k until the end of battle, and uh, the following ability. When his attack hits, if it's the 4th battle of that turn or more, count must 2 to re retire all of your opponent's rearguards. Keep in mind, I mean, it's the 4th battle of that turn or more, but it can hit anything, once again. So, again, pretty heavy on the count but it's kind of like the opposite of Naval Gazer. So, Naval Gazer stands, this retires, so usually going to be retiring like 3 at most, though, so keep that in mind. And then finally... I mean, there's a few other things. Let's look at Benedict first. Um, Tristinger Dragon is also in here too. This saw some use. Limerick 4, when he attacks a Vanguard, if it's the third battle of that turn or more, counter charge 2. This helps you do more combos and more of the, like, you know, uh, intercept, ignoring skills, and then count suit to have one of your rear guards get plus 3k power. You're not going to use this that often, I think. Maybe. I'm not sure. Benedict kept his skill. Rearguard Circle once per turn. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked a Vanguard. Stand it. It gets power minus 5k until end of turn. So this is the original title assault without. Needing to soul blast, or it didn't need to soul blast initially. So, this is initial title assault basically. It's gonna be a 4 of 100%. But then we have one more card Blue Storm Supreme Dragon Glory Maelstrom. I was really wondering how they would buff Glory Maelstrom in this game. And it's a very cool buff. So, first things first, if he's in cross ride, Lunar Break 5 becomes Lunar Break 4. And then cross ride, if you have Maelstrom in your soul, he's 13k. Lunar Break 5, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, Kalmas 1. It's a lot of battle, gets plus 5k power, and your opponent must randomly discard a grade 3 from hand to activate a sentinel. If they could not discard, the sentinel does not activate. So, instead of just saying no PGs, what this says is your opponent needs to keep grade 3s in hand, otherwise they cannot use their perfect guard, and they'll lose that grade 3 from their hand. So, it's pretty interesting. This is like the other kind of guard restrict that they're going to do in this game, and I like it. It's very nice. It's it's like it's actually tactical. You could just keep more grade 3s in your hand to avoid the glory. Um, so I think it's pretty good. Now, these are all the important cards. We have to skip a lot, so you can just reach through a bunch of them. But from these clans, what do I think is going to be in the May update? I think that's a very easy question. It's going to be Aqua Force without the Glory Maelstrom and without cards like um, Nicolas will not be in. I don't think so. So that's Aqua Force next set for sure, in my opinion. Great Nature will be in June in Japanese. The Blood will be in June, and Dungaree as well. That will be in June. Um, Spectral Duke will be next month, is what I'm expecting. And then we're going to get Chrome Jailer as well as the... Um, we're going to get Chrome Jailer as well as Platina Azel in June, but we're going to get Spectral Duke next month. Uh, Tashkaze might be an event. I think skip these. Pale Moon, definitely in the May set. So together, so we have Aqua Force, as well as Pale Moon. And then definitely Dimension Police with uh, Great Dayusha, because it was already in the story. Dark Regulars, 100% as well. And I would say that's it. So I think next set will be Dark Regulars, DP, Pale Moon, Aqua Force. And then the June set will be the final Aqua Force cards, Great Nature, Narukami, Gold Paladin, and that is... And then the... Blaster Blade Spirit, Blaster Dark Spirit from these, and that's it. Really quickly, sorry the lighting is off and my hoodie has changed and everything, I'm recording this uh, much later. Um, they added Murkumo, which is the last thing that needed to be added, but was missing when I was initially recording and I completely forgot about it. Um, there's only a few key cards to talk about, so I'm going to go through them quickly, you can read the rest, there's quite a few on the website, they'll be in the description. Triple Rare-wise, they have Mandala Lord, 
who now has a skill when he is attacked, you can combo one and Persona Blast to have the attacking unit lose 10k until end of battle. That's the only skill he has, so it's purely defensive, which is pretty cool. I could see this being fairly good. I mean, it basically counters a trigger, so that's kind of nice. Um, and then Shiroyuki has a similar skill, except Limit Break 4 when she's attacked, Counterbots 1 and Persona Blast, to have the attacking unit get power minus 20k until end of turn. Now, the reason why it's good that they're until end of... Like, she's until end of turn, but Mandala Lord is end of battle, so she's immediately a bit better because... So you basically makes it so that, like, if it's, like, the end or something, then they cannot... Like, even if they restand, it's going to be minus 20k power. So it's a pretty big minus, and so this is going to be pretty good. I wonder if they're going to release them together. And then the aggressive, I guess... I mean, Talamo is an aggressive card as well, but the more, like, you know, proactive play card is Magatsu Storm. So he, this is the um, right chain. So you have the remaining pieces above this, but Magasu Storm skill is limit break 4, Kalamas 2, to get plus 3k power, and until end of turn, call 2 Covert Demonic, Demonic Dragon Magatsu Storm from your deck at the end of that turn, put those units in the bottom of your deck. So exactly the same as uh, previously, just calls out 2 copies of itself, and then if you have the grade 2 in the soul, he gets power plus 1k. So, yeah, there's quite a few cards to look through, there's Zambaku even, but I don't think that's going to be good in, in Zero, and things like that, so uh, Fushimi as well, just a lot of the, like, a lot of the cards you would expect from Orokumo to be in here, so that's another one. So, real quick insert here at the end, because this video is way too long for me to talk about it. So yeah, that was a lot. 40 minutes raw footage, god damn. Alright, so, that's it. That's the data mine. It's huge. Look through it yourself, link in description to the website so you can read through it. It's a lot. It's really a lot to look through and to digest, but when the we get more leaks or more stuff, you can expect to see them on this channel, but yeah, I'm not going to prolong this video anymore. Thank you so much for watching. This is a lot to digest, and hopefully I covered it well enough. Check out the Vanguard Zero meta website. Also join the Vanguard Zero Reddit Discord as well. Uh, we put in the work to translate all of these and put them on the website for you, so make sure to support the folks over there. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.